Hi, we're just walking through some of the initial startups from a cold chip of the MC90B. Um, so the MC90B, um, we're going to follow the same pathway as the MEK. Um, we have uh, a few auxiliary systems to start up. Uh, we have electricity, uh, cooling water, air compression, diesel generators uh, to get going before we can move on to starting up the boiler. So. Uh, first spot that we're going to start is in elect our electric power plant. Um, where we're going to start with is our emergency generator. So we're going to try and create our pathway from our emergency generator. If I just go to page 7, 8, um, what, uh, what I can do is um, kind of just take a look. I'm going to turn on the hand pump to build a bit of pressure for my um, uh, Lube oil system. Uh, everything appears to be ready to go. I've got diesel oil. Um, I'm going to just start it. So my speed is increasing. It has a set point actually of about 1800 RPM. So I'm looking for my speed to get up into that range. I'm going to turn off my hand pump. It's ready to restart at some point. Uh, and you can see I've stabilized around 1800. And I've got some cooling water and lube oil. And I appear to be running OK. So if I go back to page 70, uh, I'm going to turn on my voltage controller. Um, I am now producing voltage and frequency, and I'm going to connect in my breaker. Uh, I've created this pathway, and let's go to 73 and see what I've done. Uh, so 73 uh, is my emergency switchboard, and what I have is electricity that is uh, being supplied to this bus. Uh, it will supply these panels. What I have is a number of devices. A couple of the key ones that I'm going to be using uh, at the start is, say, my emergency air compressor, um, battery chargers, um, emergency transformer, emergency operating panel, uh, diesel generator, lube oil priming pump one, diesel generator preheating, and auxiliary seawater pump. Uh, I think that's okay for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my diesel generator. I have a couple long lead items that I want to accomplish. So let's go over to my diesel generator one, first of all. So I'm on my diesel generator page now. Um, the piece that I want to start right away is to turn on my preheater. So I turned on my breaker for that. What I have now is the ability for uh, a little circulating pump to start circulating water through the through the diesel generator and allowing a little bit of warm up. So you can see it's starting to warm up inside and that'll help protect the engine from a, a harsh cold start. Um, the other thing that I want to do is go to my start air system, so 59. And my other long lead item is going to be to fill up my air compressing tank, so my air reservoir here. So I'm going to open up a, a valve to allow me access to my emergency start receiver. Uh, follows it back. Looks like I don't need any cooling water system in this case. Uh, it's a fan cooled and air cooled um, uh, radiator of some type, so I don't need cooling water. Uh, looks like I'm ready to start. Um, you can see before I start, I have this set to remote. Um, what I want to do is switch it over to local. And what that's doing is it's transferring the duty of starting or stopping this device to the local control panel. So the push button right on it, this on button, now is active. When I had remote set, this guy didn't work. So I'm going to turn it on, and you can see that it's now starting up and I've got flow that's coming in and my tank is starting to fill up.
and I can create that pathway across to my DG1 and I can keep an eye on it as it's filling up. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to come across to DG1 and I've got a number of systems that I need to get up and running. Um, you can see my cooling water is doing okay. It's starting to warm up. So I'm up about 30 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to keep that cooling or warming up. Um, so I've got three systems that I need to tackle now. Lube oil down here, my seawater system over here, and over here I have my fuel system. So let's start with the lube oil. Uh, first thing I want to do is add in some lube oil so that I'm out of the danger zone for low oil. Uh, I have my manual lube oil pump active um, and I'm going to turn that on. First what I want to do is open up one valve so that I have a pathway in. So if I turn that on, what I should see is my pressure and flow starting, so I'm starting to circulate some of this oil. Um, next let's look at the fuel system. So fuel, I've got two places that fuel can come from, 5 and 11. Uh, I'm going to come from 5 at this point, so let's go over there. Uh, what we see is we have our diesel oil service tank. Uh, a couple of valves to get there, so I have this uh, emergency shutoff valve, a quick acting valve uh, to open, and then another valve to get to my DG1. Uh, that brings me to this point, so if I keep following through, uh, sometimes I need to adjust this valve position. Right now it's in line. I've got another shutoff valve. Pump is going to be activated automatically by the rotation of the engine, so I don't need to turn that guy on. And I've got a filter to uh, pass through, and that will give me access to the engine for recirculating back to the diesel oil fuel service tank. Uh, so, last thing I need to do is look at my seawater system. It's a good idea at this point just to take a look at my air compressors, right? So I can see I haven't overfilled my air compression system. If I look at my start air system, uh, I'm not overheating. Uh, I haven't contaminated it with a whole bunch of water. Um, so I think I'm okay just to leave that going at this point. I want to keep monitoring it, but I'm okay at this point. So off to my seawater system. Um, if we remember with my electrical, I gave access to my auxiliary seawater pump on page 73. So I gave that power, so I should be able to operate that system. So if I look at what feeds the auxiliary pump, I either have a high suction sea chest, an upper uh, intake for water, or a lower. Um, we'll open up a low water sea chest. Uh, it's going to pass through the auxiliary pump. I'll turn that on in a minute. It's going to come up and through to my diesel generator one freshwater cooler. It's going to continue through. Now, a lot of mistakes that get made is that I forget to open up a discharge, uh, so overboard. And really, what happens is it just creates a circulation loop, a reservoir it dumps into as a sea or ocean, so it's essentially an unlimited reservoir. Uh, but I want to make sure that I have that pathway created. This pathway as well exists, which is a recirculation loop, so it can allow me to change what my temperature of cooling water that passes through in case it's too cold or too hot. Uh, looks like my pathway is okay and I'm going to turn on my pump and validate that I do have flow going through my system. Looks like it's flowing through and in fact is eventually going and discharging overboard. Let's go back to my diesel generator. So diesel generator 1 uh, again, I'm almost there for my pressure. Um, my temperature has now warmed up 
quite a bit more, so let's preheat it. Um, I'm not in as much risk of damaging the engine when I start it up because of the cold temperatures. And once we get up above 15, we should be okay to start this. So I'm in local mode, so if it's in remote, I'm going to need to switch over to local. And let's give it a try here. What I'm monitoring is that all of my flows are functioning as I intend them to. So I have flow of fuel. This is not zero. I've got flow of air. This is not zero. I've got flow of my cooling water system. I've got flow of cooling water. You can hear an alarm just went off. This was my lube oil system, so telling me that it was not warmed up yet. Uh, so it will eventually warm up. Um, and that alarm will eventually go away. Uh, looks like I've stabilized around 9.05. If I take a look at my data sheet, looks like this wants to be about 900 RPM for the, for the engine. So I think I'm pretty happy with where it's sitting. Uh, I'm going to switch this pump over into auto mode and it will decide to turn itself on or off automatically. So just before I leave this page, I'm going to scan through. I've got my pump on auto. I've got my preheater on auto. I've got flow for cooling water. I've got lube oil. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with how this guy is, is operating. I'm going to go to my start air system. Another alarm. Um, again, cooling water was not warm enough yet, so that'll go away once uh, once we warm up. Uh, just so I don't forget, um, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm on top of this, either setting to automatic controls or else, so I don't overfill this tank. Um, I'm just going to turn off this this guy for now. Eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them over to remote and set them into automatic. Start. Uh, last thing that I want to do uh, is connect my diesel generator to my electrical system. Um, so if I come here and I try to connect my voltage controller, uh, it doesn't appear to be working. Uh, because it's an electromagnet that's spinning, what I need to do is allow it to have some electricity. Um, so since the only place that I'm supplying to is 73, my emergency switchboard, um, what I have is a few places down here where I haven't really touched. Um, the voltage controller is controlled through the main switchboard, so by activating this piece, um, it will give me uh, the ability to turn on that voltage controller. While I'm doing it, I'm going to activate everything else. Um, so my emergency systems. Um, to get this guy set up, I've got my emergency transformer. It supplies voltage here, comes down. I've got the transformer gets activated, and I've got these guys that I will activate. I come back to my electric power plant, we can see now that my voltage controller is on. And what I'm able to do is switch to diesel generator and connect. Anytime I've switched electrically, what I want to do is just validate that I have all the systems I intend to have running still running. Critical one in this case is my auxiliary seawater pump. Uh, sometimes if we switch uh, it may reset. So in this case it looks like it's still running so I'm pretty happy. We'll continue on with the next video uh, where we'll uh, start up some more systems.